Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid-back yet very inspiring conversations with other full-time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists that it is completely possible to have a great career in the arts and if you ever want to tune in and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests then just check out the schedule over at facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy every tuesday to catch us on live i'll see you there This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly (laughs) and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. Hello! This solo episode is all about everybody's favorite subject, pricing. (laughs) This is one of the top questions that I get in my Instagram DMs and in my Facebook DMs and in the Arts Academy Advanced and just literally everywhere. It's always about pricing. And I'd be lying if I said that, you know, sometimes I don't, you know, stumble quite a bit when somebody asks me for a price quote. And I always have to be like, um, I'll get back to you because I have to go home and just like go over everything and just really decide, you know, what is fair and how I'm going to charge someone. And so this episode is all about the questions you should ask yourself before giving a price quote. And these are honestly the questions that I ask myself as well. And sometimes whenever I'm talking about pricing to my husband, Ryan, he will sometimes ask me this very first question first as well, which is how I know that I should ask it and how I know you should ask it as well because it helps me get clarity. And that question is, number one, how much time do I think I'm going to spend on this project? So whether it's a custom canvas commission, a really big mural project, I have to lay it out and really decide how much time am I going to spend on this one thing? Because to me, the way that I price things is by time. And you can do it by size, uh, but my preference is by time. And so just to reiterate just a little bit, I have a art pricing guide for everyone. If you want to go download it, it's at www.artpricingguide.com. And you can go there and it's like a five page pricing guide over how I price my projects, which is by the size or by time. And it gives you equations to where if you want to do it, you know, by an hourly rate, say your hourly rate is $50 an hour times however, however long you're going to spend on it, plus supplies and plus travel and just all those things. Or if you want to do it by square inches or square feet, I give you a grid to where you can decide if you want to do $1 per square inch or $20 per square feet or whatever. But you can download that by going to Art pricing guide dot com and that'll help you through it and I made this because I get this question so so much which is also another reason why we're doing a second podcast episode over pricing and if I, I don't think I mentioned but I have a whole podcast episode over this this is episode 17 I believe it's in the beginning somewhere and it's all about how to price your art and I walk you through everything so but today is all about the questions you're going to ask yourself before giving a price quote and we're just going to go over these main questions and the first one, like I mentioned, is how much time do you really think you're going to spend on it? And in order to know that, first, you have to have a design ready, and which is 
kind of tricky, you know, because a lot of people, whenever they want a price quote, a lot of people don't know exactly what they want. So they want a price quote from you. They want a really good idea. You know, they want a timeline of how long it'll take you and like when you can start. And they want all of this before they're even really sure what they want. And so it's kind of tricky. But the best way that I think to do that is just to explain to them, like, you know, the price really depends on how much time I'm going to spend on it. And your method might be different, but let's just talk about mine real quick. And I mentioned, you know, we could do a lot of detail. That's going to cost quite a bit. Or we can do, you know, something really basic, but something that will still look really cool. So if you're, you're on a budget. And so I'm, I then just telling people that it really helps for them to feel really open. And, you know, you're being open and honest with them. And so they can be open and honest with you of like, okay, yeah, like, I have $1,000 to spend, or I have, you know, $200 to spend, or I have $10,000 to spend, whatever it is, you explaining, you know, I can do as much as you want, and we can make it look as cool as you want and as detailed, or we can do something really simple, but still effective. And, but all of that depends on how much time I'm going to spend on it and to determine what I'm going to charge you. So that's the first question. Ask yourself and write it down. How much time Am I going to spend on it? How much time is this going to take? And add a couple hours to that. (laughs) So everybody knows that, you know, like when you give someone a price quote, you're like, oh, I can get that done in a day. And it ends up going for a day and a half. (laughs) Or you're like, I can get that done in a week. And it ends up going for 10 days. And so I would just give yourself a little bit of a buffer. You know, like if you really think it's going to take a day and a half, give yourself two days. Or if you really think it's going to take three days, maybe give yourself three and a half to four days. And what that does, it just it makes you less hurried and you can always drop the price back down if it takes you less time and if you feel like, you know, like being really fair and only charging people, you know, a certain amount. And But it's really hard to ask for more. You almost can't. You almost just can't ask for more unless they want more done to it. And so if you give them a three-day quote and it ends up taking you four days, you can't really you can't really ask for more. However, if you give them a four-day quote and it ends up taking you three days, you can always you know, charge them less, And which is what I do, which is how you'll get a customer for a life, by the way. If you're like, hey, you know, that didn't take as long as I thought, um, I'm just going to charge you less. Like, oh my gosh, you'll get so much more business from that customer. <laughs> okay. That was the first question. Another one is one that I think a lot of you might not be thinking of, but it's something that I've had a lot of experience with in the past year, I'd say. So especially in the past like six months to a year, I've started hiring people. And so your second question is, should I hire someone to help me? And this can go both ways and I've used it in both ways. So I've hired people that are specialists in that area to help me because I wasn't, you know, really experienced in doing this certain style of mural. So I I seeked out another artist to come in and help where it was his specialty and so they can help me and I've hired on the other end, you know, like I there are just sometimes where I just need an extra hand and I need people to just fill in the lines. <laughs> and if my husband Ryan doesn't want to do it because he has a full-time job, I will hire another artist, you know. And You know, it just, it helps a lot just to get the base color down and just speed everything up. And there are so many factors that come into hiring people. Generally, you know, if it's an artist who is a specialty and you you need their expertise, you're going to pay them more. However, if it's someone who really needs the work, is really new into the art world, and you just need them to fill in the blanks, like, you're going to charge them a bit less. However, you can work that into your quote. And that's a lot of what I've had to do in the past year, really. I'm like, okay, I think I can get this done in two days. However, if I hire someone to come on and help me, I think I can maybe get it done in a day and a half. So what would I need to hi- uh, to pay that helper to help me, even if it's just for, you know, a couple hours or the full time, it doesn't matter. And like, how would that look? And just write it all down. And I actually was just talking to an Artist Academy Advanced member here recently, and she mentioned how she was going to do this clouds mural, and everything, you know, it was just a bit over her head, just a little bit, and where she wasn't experienced yet, and that's fine, like, it's okay. 
And I mentioned, I was like, you know, what if you hired somebody who is experienced? And then that way you don't have to pass up the job, you know, and you can also just get more experience. You can make a connection with an artist. You hiring that artist on to help is going to get you in really good with them because you're giving them work. And I guarantee they'll hire you on later on if you guys get along and work well together. So think about that. Think about could you hire on another artist? And a lot of the times... I've seen it just so much. Like people, they don't want to hire anybody else on. And I'm like, man, just like being in that space for the last year of hiring people on and having people help me is a a game changer. And so many good things can come of it. Whether it's, you know, getting other jobs and networking with other artists or really just having something done quicker or having a different set of eyes on your project for people to be like, oh, that's a good idea, but this is how we can make it better. You know, working together is where the magic happens. And so if you have it in the budget to do it, then do it. And there are actually, there's a a mural that I'm actually going to work on here this week and to where they're not really paying anything. And so I asked people, I'm like, hey, it's a volunteer project. Do you guys want to come? And they're like, heck yeah. And so they're coming out and we can all, you know, work together and they can get a little bit of experience and exposure and promotion and I can get it done faster. And so it's just great. So number two was should you hire someone to help, whether they're more or less experienced? And should that go into the budget and how should it go into the budget? Write that down. So the third one, another one is, this is something I asked myself here recently, and I haven't really done it until the last, like, I don't know, a couple months, but I ask myself this, if I end up spending a few more hours than I anticipate, will I resent the work? So this goes back to how much time do I really think I'll spend on it? But it just takes it a little bit of a step further to really just put yourself in the position of like, okay, their budget is this, you know, I think I'll get it done in three days and I don't think I, I have any time to buffer it and or any like budget to buffer. Like I really think it'll take three days, so I don't want to buffer it to four days because they just can't afford it. Um, but I think it'll take the full three days to get the job done. What... what will it feel like if you're at the end of that third day and you need to spend another half day on it? Will you resent it? Like really just think about it because that kind of blends in with the, one of the other things that I asked myself is, is this fun? You know, like, is this something I want to do? Is this a painting that I want? Or am I just, just taking it because I need the money? And that's totally okay too, you know? Like it's totally okay to do something and take it and take on a commission because you need the work. Like that's, all of us artists do it, especially in the beginning. And so really asking yourself like before you agree to a price, it's will I end up resenting it if I end up spending a lot more time than I think is needed? Or if I don't price this right, Will I resent this? Because a lot of the times here too, like I'll know that people don't have a big budget and I'll be like, okay, well, I really want to do it. But like, I mean, kind of like I just, I, I want to do it for them. And then I price it too low and then I end up spending more time and I just end up resenting it a little bit. And I just don't get as excited about it in those last couple days. And it's just not as fun. And so like, just kind of ask yourself, like, am I giving myself a fair chance? Because you, you know, pricing it as you should, or as you think you should, it's also fair to the customer as well, because you're going to be able to give your best to them if it's priced right. And you're going to feel like, you know, you're not doing them a favor too much and that you guys are really having an equal exchange. And that's what it is. Like, will you end up resenting it if it's going to take more time to do it? Or if they don't have the budget, you know, like, will you end up resenting doing this for free? Like, will you end, will it end up, like, will you lose sleep over it? Uh, will you be really annoyed? Is that worth it? Because I did one project, which I won't mention what it is, but I did one project and it ended up taking me a really long time. And it was in the heat and I was just like, oh, and it was just so low paid that I was just, res- I just resented it. And I was like, gosh, I just do not want to end up in this position again. And so that's how I know to ask myself, will I end up resenting this if it, you know, if it's not going to be able to pay what I want it to, or if it's going to take way too much time, which all projects do. Okay. Another thing is, is there anything in this for me? So if it is a low budget or, you know, if you're trying to determine a price and 
if this is just a piece that's going to hang in a customer's home, then it's usually not much in it for you. However, which this kind of goes into what the next podcast episode will be about, which will be street art, which I am just hugely like passionate about. And because street art is promotion for you, it's exposure. And I know that a lot of people roll their eyes and resent the idea of just exposure in general because we've all heard it so much and it's just, you know, we beat it to death. It's, an, it's annoying, but it is a thing. And exposure is what gets you other jobs. And so just think about it. Like, is there a chance that I'll be able to get another job with this job? Or get a better job. Because there are so many times I've done things for free or for really low cost. And I ended up getting really high paying jobs afterwards. And so to me that's just 100% completely worth it. Which is why I'm still doing it. Which is why I'm working on a project this week downtown. And it's going to be a giant mural. Because I mean first off I want to create more street art. And just more art around Springfield, Missouri. Because we are still a blank canvas. And starting the 417 Street Art Project is a passion project of mine. So all of that. But more work will come from it. So me going and doing this project for this charity or uh, this nonprofit because uh it's going to be at the ymca downtown they're a nonprofit; they don't really don't have a lot of money and they gave me full reins on the design and everything and so me going to do this for them is huge exposure for me around town it's in a prominent area and cars are going to be driving by it people are going to notice it just hands down people are going to notice it this is one of the most this will be one of the most seen murals that I've done so far I fully I fully believe that and so I will get more work from this whether it's people at the Y being so thankful and recommending me or people just seeing it and being like oh wow I want to hire that artist to do this whatever more work will come from it so just think about that too whenever you're giving a quote and just because there are certain people who you know they can't afford a ton or you know, like it's just, it's going to be a hassle for you to do it. You're going to have to squeeze it in or whatever. Like just think about it before you give a price quote. Is there anything in it for you? Because, you know, our art business, you know, we should be taking it seriously. We should be thinking ahead. I'm always thinking ahead. It's actually very hard for me to think just in the present moment sometimes because I'm always thinking two steps ahead. Like what, if, if I do this, what will happen? If I do this, what will happen to that? Like, it's just, I'm always thinking ahead. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. Whenever you get a chance to do a free mural, they don't realize that you're going to get a paid job afterwards. And I truly believe that because it's happened to me so many times. (laughs) And on that subject as well, I just want to kind of give you a little bit of a tip of something. um, I'm not sure where I picked it up in the last couple years, but this is something I do now. And it's just really just determining what you'll do for free and what you'll, you'll get paid for and what you'll want high dollar for and what you'll let people talk yourself, talk you down for. So what I mean that for that is some of the things in my box of things that I'll do for free is this podcast. So giving out free advice. This is completely free. However, on a pay level, if you, you know, if you want my systems and a look into my inbox and to show for me to show you exactly how I write emails and proposals and estimates and invoices and just and how I get business like just a tangible example, all of that that's paid for in the Arts Academy Advanced mem- Membership. However, me giving you advice on things that I'm currently doing in my, in my business that's working and you to take that advice and use it in your own, you know, without me holding your hand through it, you know, like to give you inspiration, that's free. Like, then that's where I draw the line. I'm not going to just hand out, um, like, my templates and everything. Although... <laughs> you are getting an art pricing guide. Like you'll you'll get a, a quick little guide with it, the artpricingguide.com, and you can get that pricing guide with it. So <laughs> that's kind of redundant. But um, doing this podcast is completely free. However, learning the advanced techniques are not. So another thing is charity work. I don't mind ma- not making very much when it comes to a charity, especially if, it, if it's a charity that I know and I'm associated with and I like, like Big Brothers Big Sisters or, you know, now the Y downtown or um, the Discovery Center and stuff like that. Like, I will make a considerable less amount if I'm painting for a nonprofit or a charity. 
because I fully believe that the people who are working there, I they're not making very much, and they're doing a lot of good, a lot, and they're doing the work that I frankly I don't want to do. Like they're helping kids and feeding the homeless and you know, providing resources for people and that's their life and they're, you know, they're putting their part in. So my part is to help out every once in a while or help out, you know, for a lower cost because me coming in and saying, you know, no, like I'm not going to do this unless you pay my crazy amount fee or whatever. It just, it seems a little skeezy to me. And I think there are so many things that can come from helping a nonprofit like, you know, getting in with some of the donors to the to the nonprofit. Those are people who just give money because they have money, you know, to people who need it. And getting and rubbing elbows with those kind of people is a really good way to expand your network. I've done um I've done what is it? Uh, kids rooms in really million dollar homes because I've been associated with those kind of people and they've recommended me or I've done kids rooms for them especially and I, you just go into these like million dollar homes and there's people who have done really well for themselves and like that's how I meet them is through charities. And so whenever I think about doing something for a charity, I think about that. I think about two steps ahead of it. It's twofold it's you know I'm getting to network and I'm getting to help out and contribute to a really good cause and so doing a charity is something that I don't mind to do a little bit less for or to be paid a little bit less so that's a question that I ask myself I'm like okay are these people making a ton of money on this you know is this a business that's going to make a ton of money and if it's no then okay like it depends but more than likely I'll lower my price for that Another one is one thing that I do for free is um, the 417 Street Art Project. So I've done a couple for free and then I've done some for pay. And a couple of them, you know, I had to do for free in the beginning just to like get momentum. Sometimes you have to show people what a good idea is. Sometimes they're not going to just believe you that you have a good idea. You have to show them. So like with the Monarch Butterfly Wings, I started that. And that showed other people so that I got paid to do other wings. Now, I will get paid. I get paid to do all wings now. But that wasn't always the case in the beginning. I did some for the zoo here locally for free. I did the the monarch for free, which you, you guys have probably seen with the, the little bitty butterflies coming out of it. I did that for free. However, now I'm charging 1500 for wings and that's just, that's my thing now. Now, I will not do them for free anymore. However, to get things going, I did. No problem. Sure. Okay. So that's about it. That's all I have for you guys today. Those are just the main questions for you to ask yourself before giving a price quote, just to go over it. One is how much time do I think I will spend on it? Like how much time do you really think you'll spend on it? Another one is should I hire someone to help? Someone more or less experienced? And I hope that... I hope a lot of people take that into consideration too because it's just, it opens up more for you. Not every artist will hire you back. I've had artists that I hire a lot and nobody asks me to hire to hire me back and I'm like, okay, that's fine. But uh, some will. Some will be like, hey, I have this project. Do you want to help on it because I need help or because I want your help? And so ask yourself, should I hire someone on it to just make the project better? And should I work that into the budget? Another one is if I spending if I end up spending a few more hours than I anticipate, will I resent the work? So if you are giving someone a discount or you know going out of your way to do it, really think about it. Are you going to be resenting it at the end of it? Do you really love this project enough to do it for less than you normally would, or you know just to to do it on your nights and weekends when you really don't have the time? Like, are you really gonna love it at the end of it? Is it really worth it? Another one, is there anything in this for me? <laughs> Will you get exposure? Will you get other jobs from it? And, you know, I've already explained, you know, exposure is almost a mythical thing sometimes, but it's something I'm always thinking about. I'm always thinking two steps ahead, like I mentioned. And so if there is something in it for you, like, take that into consideration, you know? Another one, uh, determine what you'll do for free and what you will be paid for. And actually, I mean, actually, I told you guys all about my free stuff. So podcast, charity work, and some forms of street art. But then my paid stuff are the wings, um, custom commissions for your home, stuff like that. That's the stuff that 
I will get paid for. I don't just do that. And a lot of the times, whenever people message me too, just back on that subject, people will be like, hey, can, can you do this? I'll be like, no, um, I do stuff for charities for free, but not for individuals. And that kind of be like, oh, because a lot of people, a lot of people will ask for like, for random stuff from me. And I'm like, no, like, I'm not just going to do that for free. What? I only do it for charities. And they're like, oh, okay, weird. <laughs> But yeah, but that just t- shows people, keeps them, keeps you from feeling like shit from people, for people being like, hey, why won't you do this for me? It's like, oh, I only do it for charities, but you have the means where other people don't. So that's kind of a, um, something to kind of say to them. <laughs> also, a reminder that the art pricing guide is available at artpricingguide.com. You can go to the link in this podcast episode to download it if you would like. And it's like a five page guide on how to price your art, how to do it by the square feet or square inches method, or how to do it by time. And I just have a bunch of grids on there and just like equations on how to figure out what your time is worth and what the square footage will be worth and all of that. It's super, super easy. Okay. That is my little mini episode for you guys today. I hope this helps. And if you have another question that you guys ask yourself every single time before you give a price quote, let me know because there are a lot of things that I, you know, might have not mentioned and other people don't know. So let me know your feedback. And if you guys end up using any of these, and if you hire someone because you heard it here, or, you know, if you add a couple hours onto it because I mentioned it or something, message me and let me know. Be like, hey, thank you so much. This helps because that really helps me to sit, come down and sit to the mic and record for you. I hope this helps. And let me know if it does. All right, I am off. I will talk to you guys next week. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly (laughs) and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. If you review our podcast and send a screenshot of that review to me on Instagram, I am at art by Andrea Earhart. I will then promote your art on my story and tag you as a little thank you for helping me grow this podcast and our Artist Academy community. I have a reach of over 50,000 on Instagram. So this is a little help me to help you incentive. Also, if you ever want your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy to check out the schedule every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you next week.